Let's go. We gon' ride, we gon' ride, we gon' ride, ride. We gon' ride, we gon' ride, we gon' ride. We gon ride. Hi, I'm Bud, and I am the Compressor Guru. Welcome to the channel. This is our first episode. We're going to cover the five mistakes that guys usually make when they plumb up their shop. If you follow my advice, you will have a drier, better quality, and correct volume of air uh, at all your stations in your shop. I have over 40 years experience in the compressor field. I have rebuilt most any kind of reciprocating compressor you can name. Reciprocating means it's a piston compressor. I've also worked on a great many screw compressors. Uh, when they say screw, that's actually a helical screw. I have some knowledge there, but that's not where my expertise lies. What we put on here is what I know about. In the course of these episodes, we will go over plumbing, we'll do re uh, compressor rebuild, repair, service and maintenance. We will cover air dryers, filters, accessories, tools, and we are going to have, there's not really a shortage of subjects on this. So we have lots of material, but if you have an idea or a question, put it in the comments below and I will do my best to either answer it in the comments or we'll do an episode on it. Now to mistake number one. Okay. Mistake number one. I have been in a lot of shops and the guy will get a level out and he'll point to the wall and he'll say look how level that pipe is that I run for my airline and I mean, it is just perfect perfectly wrong I have a whiteboard right here and there's the level and the purple line I drew out to be the wrong way to run pipe you'll see it is perfectly level I realize you're going to go, geez, did you get a level out? No, I just grew it. What you want to do is you want to have your compressor line running either uphill or downhill away from your compressor. In this little drawing in the green, we ran it downhill away from the compressor and we dropped straight down and we put a valve here. This is a big drip leg. What happens is when the pipe is level and the air is flowing through it, the water that condensates in the pipe will drop straight down and go straight to your tools. But if you run the pipe off level, let's say this is, let's say this is uphill from the compressor. If you run the pipe off level and run it uphill from the compressor, the water condensates here is not going to get in here except what condensates out past your drop. So we want to run it off level and in mistake number two I'll show you how to keep it out of your drops too. So we're at mistake number two. The guys in mistake number one we run a, they run their pipe level we're now running it off level. At mistake number two they take and they go down for their drop to go to their tools. This is probably 10 feet in the air, maybe higher. But they, uh, they go straight down and whatever water has condensated in this tube will go right down this and head for your tools. So, the right way to cure that is we take an elbow and a sleeve, we go up, over, and down. For our drop. We go up over and down for our drop. The water that's in this tube in your main line, gravity doesn't just blow it up out of there, it will stay in there and end up over here at your drain. And you get a better quality, a drier quality of air to go down to your tool. 
That's mistake number two, and that's how to rectify it. Okay, so now we have the air coming down our drop. Mistake number three is generally, a lot of guys will just put an elbow at the bottom of their drop and put their hose right in here. And if some guys will tell me, but that hose is closest to the compressor, the one that catches all the water. When I use that hose, it's like turning a water spigot on and I have to drain it. And then I can get some air out of it. The, 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 there's so much water in the air there. Well, remember, if we go back to number two, we eliminated a lot of that, but there's still a chance some of the water may condensate in the drip leg, and you're still going to be getting it going through your tool. Now, folks, tools are too expensive to just waste them by running bad air through them. And the more water you run through an air tool, the quicker it's going to die, and you're going to have to send it to me, and we'll uh, take care of the rebuild for you. So, what we're going to do, that this is wrong, what we're going to do to correct this mistake is instead of coming down there with a elbow, we're going to put a cross in the line. I was fortunate enough, I found a cross at Home Depot. These aren't always that easy to find. And you come off each side of the cross, go into your hose or your tools, come off each side of your line, and this side you put your high pressure. This is your line pressure, you may have 175 pound in it. The other side, we put your filter, your regulator, perhaps your lubricator, but you filter and regulate your air on this side. So I don't have a filter and regulator at hand right now. And then at the bottom, this is your drip plate. Whatever moisture may condensate coming down this tube will drop into this drip leg, and then you put a valve on the bottom, just a little ball valve. Get the cheapest one as you can because uh, it's all you're doing is draining a little bit of water every now and then. Because by the time you get to this point, the from correcting your main line now is off level with the drain going up over and down to your drop and going through a cross instead of going straight out of the bottom to your hose you have used gravity and some distance away from the compressor to improve the quality of your air there's three things to think about when we're looking at the quality of air a temperature so when the warm air moves away from the compressor and it has a chance to cool in the line, you will condensate water in that line. Two, distance, the further you run it, uh, the more likely you are to have the opportunity to get more condensation out of it. And number three is gravity. We're really focusing on the gravity side of it here. These tips are about the correct way of plumbing your shop. And by the way, <clears throat> I'm certain by this point, you all are thinking about putting in the comments, Bud, you're using PVC. Bud might. But the guru would use whatever the customer wanted. Uh, whether it's black iron, whether it's copper. Uh, I have plumbed with PVC at the request of customers. Do not run PEX. PEX only has 180 PSI uh, working pressure. Uh, most of your compressors, most of your two-stage compressors are set up for 200 PSI working pressure and you stand a chance of blowing PEX out if you run that for line. I will not recommend that for a compressor system with a two-stage machine. Anyway, this is mistake number three. This is the proper way, just coming off the bottom to your hose. We'll get this up here. That's the improper way. This is now a drain. The proper way is using a cross coming off the sides and letting what water condensates come down here. So, mistake number four 
has to do mostly with your tank. There's several things that uh, we need to go over about the tank. When you're going to your air system from your tank, we have a diagram here. On the right side, especially with iron, uh, guys will run a piece of pipe out, elbow up and to the system, and it's hard plumb. Now that compressor will set and shake and vibrate, and even if you have it mounted to the floor, screwed down like you're supposed to, there's still some movement in that compressor. What that'll do, if you're hard plumb to your system, that vibration will break the weld where the fitting goes into the tank, where it will break the fitting uh, in the system, which that would be the best of the worst case scenario. So, if you hard plumb it, you stand a chance on ruining the tank. And if it's a machine I sold and you call me out for warranty and say the tank broke, I'm going to have to give you bad news and say, no, that's not warranty, that was installed incorrectly. The correct way to go to your system, and you have to forgive my weak artwork, is come out, go to a hose, and then go to your hard piping. I also drew a little valve in here. It helps if you have other issues in your system, always put a valve at the tank before you go downstream. I'll cover that in maintenance in another video, but when we can isolate the tank, we can actually check the machine and its performance, but we can't do that if you're pumping into the whole system and we have an unknown for how much uh, volume and pipe you have. So, put a valve in, use a flex line, and make sure that flex line has an angle to it going down to the tank so that the water that condensates in that, in that line, this is not misdrawn, so that the water that condensates in that line can drain back and down into the tank to the drain valve that comes out of the bottom. The, I, I hear guys talking about, oh, we, we don't want any water in our tank or ruin the tank. You're supposed to drain that tank daily. Um, it's terrible. I've been in a couple shops where at the end of the, when I was done working on the machine, I customarily reach down and drain the tank to see if there's, you know, just make sure it's completely empty. And one, one shop I was in, I reached down, or, yeah, reached down, I, I reached down and I opened the valve and the water ran and ran and ran. And it covered the entire floor of a two bay area where the compressor was uh, installed. And I said to the guy, when was the last time you drained the air compressor? And he said, well, we put it in here seven years ago. So it was literally half full. It, the water was up to where it was coming out of the side of the tank and they were complaining about how much moisture they have in their air. So drain your tank at least once a week. Daily is better. And so don't worry about a little bit of water in the bottom of the tank. If it's a certified tank, it should last 40 years under normal use or they can last much longer as well. So. Mistake number four has to do with your uh, hard piping into your system. The correct way to do it is put a hose. <laughs> so, okay, mistake number five. Guys, I have seen many of you put your filters and regulators coming right off of the compressor going to your main system. And when you need, let's say you have a tire machine and you need a full 175 pound for that rim that you can't break the bead on. You have to run over and you turn up, I should have brought a regulator today, but you turn up the regulator at the tank to 175, you go do that, and then you go turn it back down so you're only running the 100 pound through your impact wrench to uh, reinstall the wheel or whatever else you're doing. Let's run live pressure into your system 
and let's filter and regulate it at the point of use. Yeah, you're going to spend a few more dollars on filters and regulators, but you're not going to complicate your shop and waste time running back and forth. And maybe you'll turn that regulator up and leave it at 175, and then you'll overpressure your tools. And most air tools run best between 90 and 110 pounds. When you put more than 110 pound in them, you get, you're putting a lot more pressure in them and you're only getting a little more performance out of them. And it damages tool, the tool and it shortens the life of the tool by running too much air pressure into it. So regulate your air at the point of use at the drops, the way we showed you earlier with the uh, cross coming down your with the cross coming down and what I like to do is off one side leave it by pressure leave it 175 and simply put a quick coupler here for when you need that high pressure and off the other side then go to your regulator your filter your lubricator if you need to one of the other mistakes in number five is guys will put a lubricator right here most lubricators will only uh, put a mist in the air for up to 50 feet and by the time that air has moved 50 feet that oil the atomization of the oil has dropped onto the piping on the inside and you have nothing just a little bit of oil coming out it's not truly a lubricator at that point so your lubricator you want closest to your application if you put a lubricator at your tank and you decide you want to spray a fender or paint an entire car, your entire system is polluted with oil. You'll have all kinds of problems with paint, and paint's far too expensive these days to spray it and have to redo it. So by not putting a lubricator on every line, you can have a better quality of air in case you decide to paint at a certain point in your shop. Those are five mistakes that are commonly made when plumbing your shops. And I hope this advice helps you. Uh, you may say, I've got to redo that line. I now understand why I have all this water coming out. The last thing I want to talk about is there's some links in the bottom of the, uh, in the description below. One link uh, is from Sharp. They make very good filters, regulators, and such. But the link that I'm going to share with you has to do with proper uh, piping. And you will see the things I drew out in the whiteboard very well laid out in a diagram on that link. Uh, there is also links that I will put in for compressor parts. And a link to my uh, web page will be there thecompressorguru.com and feel free to click on any of the links. Also, like, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that when we uh, put new episodes out, you'll be notified when we do. Upcoming episode, we are uh, rebuilding a 2545 Ingersoll compressor uh, I actually have two of them here, and we are going to go through one of them and show you just what it takes to do everything from tearing it down, to putting the bearings in, to doing the valve job, to the rings, total reassembly, and we are going to, in different episodes, show you piece by piece how to totally rebuild that machine. We have other projects we're looking at, and we look forward to you tuning in more, and we thank you for that. Don't forget, subscribe, like, and hit that bell. This is The Compressor Guru. Have a great day.